Blessing would be upon every citizen of Tip County and our surrounding counties. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Promise and won't make it happen. Oh. Uh, Chris Virtual, 2415, Madison Drive, Unincorporated Tip County. Uh, as we approach this Floss 7 uh, action, uh, I don't know if it's on the agenda tonight, but sometime, there's just four numbers that I, I kind of want everybody to keep in mind. Just four numbers. One is 18.7. Uh, in 2021, the percentage of our local sales tax was paid by visitors was 18.7 percent. It wasn't 60 or 50 or 40 or 30 or even 20. It was about 18.7 percent, meaning we were paying about 81.3 percent for the key uh, Second number is 1,304. I used some, uh, an estimate from the Economic Policy Institute for an average Tip County family of four spending $66,000 uh, a year uh, on their personal expenses. And I, I put that into my calculator and uh, the, the number I got was $1,304 would be the, the obligation that uh, average Tip County family of four would, would pay over the six year reign of SPLOS 7. Uh, of course, your mileage can vary. You can go to the website, tipcountysalestaxpayers.com, put in your own estimate information and kind of get your own number uh, for that. Uh, third number, uh, zero. Uh, the number of city uh, council members and commissioners who have expressed any interest in raising the property tax millage rates in response to the fa uh, possible failure of the SPA 7 ref referendum is zero. There's no, uh, no one's voiced any support for that. So as a property taxpayer, I feel pretty confident that, that my millage rate uh, is secure. Uh, and then one last one, 820. In 2017, 820 people in Tip County came out to the polls and uh, decided to approve SPLOS 6, which is honestly a very small number, considering how many potential voters we have here. And I understand that it's an, uh, it's an off, off year election, it's a, it's a you know, in my case, that's the only thing that's gonna be on the ballot on November 7th, because there's, um, don't let the city. So it's hard to get people to participate in that. And so I, I, just, I just wish you luck, I hope you're able to kind of inform people about how it, how it impacts their lives and they're able to kind of vote in, in their own interest on that, on that referendum. And that's it. Thank, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Anyone else?
anyone else about to get to us? All right, see if I'll move, we'll move on. Two items be added to the agenda. Mr. Carr. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I, the clerk's done her job and got one of them in front of me. There's actually three items. Uh, one is uh, what you do have in front of you, which is a, a purchase for a vehicle. Uh, for animal control, the purchase of a new animal control. Um, uh, 2023 uh, Chevy Silverado, uh, Silverado 1500, and then I will be handing out to you uh, a rental agreement for a 500 kilowatt portable generator, and then also uh, and then I'm, uh, on the purchase of a 500 kilowatt generator and an automatic transfer switch. So three items: truck purchase, yeah. random control, rental agreement for a portable generator, and then a purchase agreement for a 500 kilowatt generator and the uh, company. And the item that's already listed on your agenda, the condemnation of the property. Okay. Thank you. There's four items to add. What did you say, ma'am? I said, and also the item that's listed on the agenda, the condemnation of the property yeah. payment, that would be, so there's four items to add. Right. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. We move on to the minutes for the regular session of July the 10th, 2023, executive session of July 10th, 2023, and call session on July 31st of 2023. Everyone's had a chance to look at those, but entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Public hearing, or we uh, maybe explain to us it wasn't necessary, but I get since it's on the workshop agenda, we have to address it. Is that great? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, I apologize. <laughs> Still trying to get square over here. What's the question, sir? The public hearing, we, we talked about the workshop. This one actually was not necessary, but since it's on the workshop agenda, I'm assuming we got to address it. Yes, Mr. Chairman, it's, it, it's in, and Chris is here, but it's TCZA 23 09. It's a uh, petition by Mr. Patel for a 12 lot subdivision that's on 13.8 acres and that's located the corner of Old Road Road and Mount Olive Church Road and Pax Matthews, you can get that in front of you. Uh, the, the question was, and, and as I said in our workshop meeting, uh, Chris and I were discussing several subdivision uh, updates. This one actually does not include any interior roads. Uh, all, all the, the zoning is, is proper, already proper in place and as long as there's no development of the interior roads it does not require approval by the board of commissioners um, i think mr uh, bates tried to explain that to me and i didn't do a good job of listening a lot of says that all the well time but uh but we went through the, we went through the public hearing process and, and you know just to, to make sure that we're transparent and everybody understands uh why that happened that's the case we'll, you know, i didn't want to Probably anybody the opportunity to speak to the commissioners tonight, even though by right Mr. Patel has uh, does not is not required for approval. All right. So we'll let Tony go through the public hearing. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So if we'll process tonight as we will uh, take comment in the public hearing and then after we do so I'll of course do the the conflict of interest um, issue. So uh, at this point we'll open the public hearing for comment for T C Z A. 2309 will uh, take comment from anyone presently that supports uh, this application. I'm not speaking to anybody here that supports it. Okay, and we'll also then take uh, any comment from anybody that opposes. Being no comment, we'll close the public hearing. This issue is with the board uh, ready for um, action. So just ask whether any board member has in themselves, a family member in the business has financial interest in the property that is you so please declare. Record that there's no conflicts of interest. We should have had to this this is this is rubber stamp but 
<laughs> let's just say it's what it is. It's, so we got to walk through the process, but it, it should be important. So it's ready for action, and my recommendation is a uh, unanimous vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion for this rubber stamp vote. <laughs> so we have a second. Second. Commissioner, we have a second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. All right, move on to our consent agenda. Uh, item 7.1 motion to construct an additional safety cell inside the existing medical offices at the Tiff County Detention Center for a cost of $24,727 to be funded from Squash 6. 7.2, motion to approve the email security contract with ThinkGuard for a cost of $11,044.99 to be funded by General Fund. 7.3, motion to purchase three thermal imager uh, <coughs> cameras for a cost of $9,843 from Municipal Equipment Company to be funded from Supply 6 and installed in the new fire engines. 7.4, motion to purchase 4,000 foot of large diameter supply hose from AEST Fire and Safety for a cost of $29,400 be funded from SWAT 6. 7.5 motion to purchase a set of Hearst hydraulic rescue tools from Municipal Emergency Services, who is a sole source provider, for a cost of $30,852 to be funded from SWAT 6. Item 7.6 motion to purchase a 2023 fully equipped Ford Explorer from Brandon Ford and Unadilla for the state contract price of $54,000 to be funded from SWAT 6. 7.7 7, motion to approve and upgrade the property tax system with Harris Local Government and the Tax Commissioner's Office for a cost of $26,865 to be funded from SWAT 6. 7.8 7, motion to contract with Trailer Business Services for personal property audits for a cost of $18,000 to be funded by General Fund. Uh, 7.9 motion to approve purchase of playground improvement for Puppy Park from Place South Burke for a cost of $131,167 to be funded from SWAT 6. 7.10, motion to approve a letter of support for an additional judgeship in the Tiffin Judicial Circuit. Item 7.11, motion to further amend USDA lease to include language preventing the use of bite dance, which is TikTok. And item 7.12, motion to authorize the chairman to execute the ACCG safety discount verification forms for workers' comp and property liability insurance. Are there any consent agenda items that any commission would like to remove to be considered? Singularly. See at nine, we have a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All right, all in favor? All right. Okay, already on the regular agenda was resolution number 2023 11 surplus vehicles and equipment. Um, <clears throat> the Tiff County Detention Center has changed to indicate that these two fire trucks, the city of Osceola is going to purchase those for $50,000 a piece. So other than that, they're the same as you saw in the work session. All right, any questions on this one? All right, we have a motion. So moved. We have a second. Second. We'll say it all in favor. All right, thank you. Item 8.2, voting delegate for ACCG Legislative Leadership Conference. Commissioner Hester has been hours in the past and planning to attend this year. Are you willing to serve in that role again? <laughs> I mean, moon pies are going to cost us <laughs> two. <laughs> <Just Okay>. two. <laughs> all right. All right. Everybody's okay with it. Commissioner Hatchwood entertain a motion to approve him as our voting delegate. So moved. All right. <coughs> Second. Second. All right. All in favor of Commissioner Hatchwood being our voting delegate. All right. Thank you. Great. Take care of my life. I was just asking one question. <laughs> okay. Right, item 8.3, appointment to the Tip County Board of Health, advocate for needy, underprivileged, or elderly. We've only received one application. Ms. Alice Archie is not, has resigned her position on there, and um, we've had one application, Ms. Salithia Curry Davis, and her term would expire um, December 31st of 2027. All right, any questions or you know, anyone else interested? Open the floor for nominations. I'd like to nominate Ms. Alita Curry Davis for that position. Any other nominations? Any 
nominations? Here are none. We'll close the floor for nominations and entertain a motion to approve. I'd like to make a motion that we accept Ms. Alethea Curry Davis for the Board of Health. We have a second. Second. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Okay. Now we're to back to the items added to the agenda. The first one being the condemnation of property on Red Oak Road for paving. <coughs> Good afternoon, Commission. How are you this evening? Good afternoon. <coughs> the board has, in previous meetings, approved the preliminary engineering on September in September of 19 and construction in May 20 of a portion of Red Oak Road from Whitmere Road to Cromer Road, which is approximately one and a half miles. There are two options for condemning the property that, that is in question tonight. Um, Option one would be condemned track three, which is 0.621 acres for $6,300. Property owner is Margie E. Fowler, map and parcel shown. Condemned track four, which is 0 0.779 acres for $9,800. And the property owner is Linda K. Ford. If you will look on your option one map, it shows a small piece of right of way um, in in yellow for the first one and in green, or excuse me, in green for the first one and in yellow for the uh, second one. That is just the amount of right of way that the county would need to build the road, minus an easement that the uh, power company would need to relocate the power poles. Option number two, would be to condemn track three and track two together. The property owner is Margie Fowler for $9,320. Because when you condemn the first part, the, the, the second part would not be a legal track of record to do anything with. Uh, the second one is condemned, condemned track four and track one, which would be $30,190. And the property is owned by Linda K. Ford. Um, property in question there, like I said, we would still need to get a 20-foot easement before the, uh, or to help the power company get a 20-foot easement. And the uh, house located on that piece of property is in the pictures in your, uh, in your packet. Uh, it is uh, in real bad shape, bad repair, has uh, some animals living in it. And we, we've had a lot of uh, talk from the neighborhood out there about taking that. Uh, both of the options are listed there, option one or option two, and it's at the board's pleasure. Can I answer any questions you have about the property or the property? I have one. Yes, both, sir. Both of these options let us do what we need to do. Both of these options would let us build our road. Yes, sir. And we still got the code with uh, a figure rate of 45,000? Yes, sir. For, for, for option two and for option one, you would only have to come up with 15, 16, 16, 16. Yeah, 16. 16 still, one You still have to acquire easement. You like still, we still have to acquire an easement. In, in and it's not way. part of this calculation. And that amount's not exactly known. So we don't know what figure we, we had. No, no, we do know what figure we're at. Yeah. We're at either option one or option two. But on option one, you still got to get the easement for the power company. We, well, the power company's got to get the easement. Gen yeah. Generally, in a situation like this, the power company comes in and, and we'll help them get the easement while we're clear, we clear it for them. Uh, in this situation right here, since we're condemning land, it would be up to them to get, to get that easement. Um, and if they didn't get that easement, they would either have to swap sides of the road and obtain easement from the other property owners, but it would, all, the, all the power of right now on this project is on this side of the road. They were offered to pay for their easement. Uh, I doubt they will. Would, would option two give them the easement? Option two would give, yes, it would yeah, give us all the property and we would get the easement and we would clean the dilapidated structure up, clean it up, get it out of there. And, and we would then give that easement to them? Yes. Mm -hmm. through, our, through the overall, through the overall project. You're talking about 45, 15, 16? Yes. You're looking at, a little over 39. Yeah. But the 
39 gives us, we can just say, put your lines where you want. Correct. It's, it's our easement to give away to it. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I, I'm sorry to say, but this is my first time seeing this. I, I think I may need to look at it a little more before I make a decision. <coughs> Any other questions? If if we uh, if we uh, put it on next month's agenda, that Jamie, I'll let you wear it. We are out there. <laughs> doing the clearing and grubbing part of the job, but if we don't own it, I can't clear and grub it. So, no, it, I mean, it, it will not hold me up. I will continue on the property that we do have right away on. Um, we just may have to finish and move off and move back later. So are you saying if we could, we could put it on next, next month, you'll be okay? Well, it'll be ideal to do it this month, but if we can't, I mean, I beg you can't be choosers, I will, uh, Board's discretion. Can we please look at it? Everybody five foot calls in. Mm -hmm. Okay. We will need a motion to take that. We have a motion to take that. I would like to make a motion that we table this until next month. We have a second. Second. Richard Reed, the second. All in favor? All right. We'll take it to next month. We can't believe the Hamilton Patrol vehicle is next. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Um, I'd like to propose the purchase of a new animal patrol truck um, to replace one that's in very bad condition. Right now, we operate three trucks to run daily calls for animal patrol for all of Pitt County. And we have a 2016 F-250 with 170,000 miles that's in pretty bad condition. Um, this one get physical condition as well as um, mechanical issues beginning. Um, so it's got a lot of rusting issues. It's having some idling problems. It's using oil and all those things. So um, I've been shopping around for the last week trying to find something that would um, suit our needs and be a good service vehicle for this community. And I've located one in Baxley, Georgia. Um, after like I said, a lot of work searching and hunting it down. Most of, you know, they don't have a lot of these on the lot that are work trucks and don't have all the luxury bills and whistles on it that we don't need. So I did find this one. Um, there's a couple of quotes probably in your packet. Um, a few quotes to order a new truck that would probably take three to six months or, or longer, who knows, in this market. But I would like to propose that we purchase the one from Woody, Woody Folsom for $45,144, and that's out the door price, and they deliver it to us. Questions? All right, we have a motion. So moved. All right, second. 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 Motion to second. All in favor of person this for an animal control. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now the rental of a portable generator. Mr. Chairman, uh, I can talk to uh, all, all of you. Uh, some, Mr. Chairman, I just spoke to some of you. Uh, the 500 kilowatt portable generator that operates it is our backup for the, uh, the LEC, our law enforcement center, which is primarily, which is the off, you know, the sheriff's office and the positive jail uh, and uh, booking our, our whole complex. Um, and I'll just read from, uh, which is the replacement agenda item. Uh, backup generator, Kitt County LEC was purchased and installed. The facility was built, uh, makes the generator in excess of uh, 20 years old, this one was the generator would no longer provide backup electricity to a, a lightning strike slash power surge. Just for your information, that, that um, has been turned into our insurance company. And uh, even the last email I saw today, if they had one little thing to do, they never going to send in a adjuster. So look at that. Um, uh, the folks that, uh, with uh, industrial controls who have been maintaining that 
that generator for roughly 20 years. Uh, gave us a minimum price to repair it of $40,000 and it could run as high as eight months a year. Oh, you're back in the court. Is that right, right? That's correct. Um, that's, that's almost, I mean, at the upper end of that, you're looking at the close to what it costs to, uh, to replace it. So just to tell you why, and, and I'm just going to talk about both of them because I think it, it'll be easier. That 500 kilowatt generator. So uh, the last time that we actually had a, a power outage at the LEC was Friday night. Uh, and it was down for approximately one hour. Uh, during that time, the, uh, the temperature in inside the jail, in particular the, uh, the, the pods or cells, whatever language you like to use, where we house uh, house inmates, and uh, I'm frantically looking for what I'm going to find here, uh, rose to uh, in excess of 90, 95 degrees. Uh, you know, that, I don't have to tell you guys that doesn't take long before we start running into uh, into problems. And uh, I made myself a really nice sheet here, which I hope yeah, I gave to you guys because I didn't give it to myself, uh, which lists the things that uh, that generator actually supports. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to get affected and get it prepared. I'm going to do it from uh, a memory. Maybe Miriam can uh, find me out that little sheet. So when, when, that, when the power goes off, the things at the jail, and Colonel Merritt can, can help me, but you know, immediately you know the lights are out at the jail. Uh, and with that generator, it, it, you know, once the power goes down, there's all, the automatic switch that's in that qu uh, quote, actually, when, when the power leaves, that switch flips over and the diesel generator kicks on. Uh, that happens within seconds. Without that generator, we, we have no lights inside the, the jail or outside the jail. Um, the, uh, the gates that, uh, around the, the exterior perimeter of that, they don't, they don't work. Um, if you want to go inside of the sheriff's office or the, uh, or the jail from uh, the outside, somebody from the inside will have to let you in, because just like here, we're on automatic uh, locks, and when the power goes out, those locks lock. Uh, the doors to the jail cells, the pods, uh, they're electronically locked, so when the power goes off, we must then result to, and we have to go and key lock all the doors in, and then unlock the doors. Uh, as I just said, if that's the case, then we're doing that without lights. Um, the fuel island that fuels all the SO cars, the, uh, the fire trucks and uh, our ambulances, uh, is that, that, that fuel island, uh, when power goes off, that fuel island uh, stops functioning. All security cameras inside the, the whole complex uh, shuts down. And, and if I'm not mistaken, now it's not here, but I think that also the security cameras in the courtrooms and all, and, and all that too. But, yeah. um, all the computers booking uh, that we have is, is down. Um, phone system is down. Uh, the refrigerators and the freezers, walk-in freezer that we have inside the kitchen, down. The oven and the, and the ranges are, are electric, they're down. Um, so the importance of having that that generator, and, and I'm doing that from memory. Ready? Did I leave anything out? That pretty much covered everything. Um, we really become almost uh, crippled without without a generator. You have to kind of function in a very much of a lockdown mode. Um, the biggest concern is being safety, not only for our employees but for the inmates themselves. Uh, one is it, it, it's dark and. Uh, uh, and we had roughly today we had 200 and what if you tell me 80 inmates? We had 260 inmates today. 260 today. Uh, we generally run what eight? Uh, there's eight or ten uh, jailers, detention officers there per shift today. We'll have 40 employees there throughout the day. Throughout the day. Yes. Um, so not only safety for the for the, the inmates but for our employees as as well. Um, we are in the season right now where power outages are, they happen. Uh, we were only down an hour Friday night, but that hour ran, ran the temperature up to, to over 95 degrees. If that was to go on for very long, we would, be having a, we would look at having a transfer inmates out of our facility to, to somewhere else. Um, now back to, to, to the cost of this, because this uh, 
and, and when I talked to you guys Friday, we were about a day and a half into realizing that this was a problem. Um, a portable generator is available. It's actually an all bidding. Uh, you can't see, um, and that is, um, it's actually Yancey Power Systems. Uh, you have a, a quote to, to utilize that, and uh, there should be a picture in there that actually shows that nice piece of equipment. It, it kind of looks like a trailer that would be pulled behind a, if it was a, you know, like a mini semi. Mm -hmm. And we would pull in and we would connect, and, uh, and it would give us, it would give us power. Uh, the price that I included uh, here, which is $13,504.37, is actually, that's four weeks rental. If you look at the breakdown, you know, the longer we rent, of course, the, the, the cheaper it is. Uh, but they actually quoted us, you know, it's $15,575 uh, a day, $3,150 a week, and $9,450 for four weeks. Uh, those, those other items there are the connections that it takes to, uh, to connect that portable generator into our system. Um, it can be connected uh, if we rent it tomorrow. It can be delivered and, and, and connected. Uh, that would give us portable power. And, and it would give us backup. I, I talked to I talked to the chair and to the Colonel Merritt. I, I know that they are uh, uneasy right now. You know, the problem with these portable generators, and as with the, the, the generator itself, is that they're not a whole lot of them. Uh, they have this one portable generator that's available, that's kind of, they're kind of holding it for us, but uh, you know, if we have a size of a storm event, and, uh, which includes a tornado, or you know, severe thunderstorm, or, or a hurricane uh, that comes through, then they become, uh, they become extremely hard to find, and they get rented up real fast, and uh, if you weren't one of the lucky few that got in early, you, you're without. And uh, I, I know Jerry Michael, but some of you remember that we, we had some generator problems with some of the water towers that we had. And not only were we without water for a number of hours, we also sent us some boiling water for over a week. Uh, and that was strictly generator related. Uh, I'm talking to the, the, the folks at the Sheriff's Office, you know, we feel like this is a not only a public safety need, but a life safety need. And, uh, so let's talk about the cost. Um, we have, um, if you look at the, uh, the agenda item that talks about the, actually the replacement of the generator, you'll see that the, the Caterpillar generator is, is the one that we have a, a, a firm price on right now. It's $115,763. And if you come right down to that, you'll see that there's an automatic transfer switch in the amount of $28,750. That switch is what actually handles that changeover from Georgia power, or outside power source, to the diesel generator. Um, that switch is also that old. Um, the, the lead time on getting any automatic transfer switch, a new one, is 20 to 25 weeks. Uh, I've talked to our county engineer and to a mechanical engineer, and uh, I've been assured that we can, uh, we can make the current switch we have work. Uh, until we can get the new switch in. At the very worst, at the very worst, power goes out, somebody might have to go and manually make that switch. Uh, so if we, if we allow for the rental to take place, we would continue to use that generator. And, and the truth is, if you approve the purchase of the generator, we would continue to use that switch until the new switch could be, could be produced. I mean, all, all I can tell you, when you have 20 to 25 weeks of lead time to get something from a manufacturer, uh, I mean, they're not making it until, until it's ordered and, then, and they're getting them out, and I, I don't understand that, but that is the truth. Uh, on the purchase of the generator itself, uh, Yancey Caterpillar has one 500 kW generator. It is in um, wherever their Atlanta offices, I know it's not but in there. Uh, it, it could be shipped in, in a day. Uh, and then I, I think we're looking at a week to, to two weeks of. Uh, uh, removing what's there and putting what is putting that in place and that that would include uh, using the, the current wiring and basically wiring that generator to our current transfer switch and bring that online so it would reduce our rental fee uh, substantially as you see on that first page we have talked to the three you know of the, the biggest uh, 
generator folks in, the, in, in this part of the, the country, and that's Caterpillar, uh, Cummins, and Kohler. Uh, I have documents that I did not include in your packets so related to get until 10 minutes before we walked in. Uh, but um, the lead time from, um, from uh, Kohler is uh, 40 to, uh, there's one right here. Cummins is 40 to 45. Right, well, it's actually, um, system to come and Jesser is right here and I believe you're right it is 40 to 45 weeks yeah 45 weeks this is actual the proposal uh, it's 45 weeks and the price of that with the switch gear is actually $184,500 so if we were to order that and we would be out 45 weeks and it's still at a higher cost than then the uh, then the caterpillar generator and Kohler sent us a quote uh, also that I have here, and it was a, a little more, about 15 pages of that. So if I can flip through, I actually highlighted that one. Um, current lead time, approximately 69 to 72 weeks uh, to, to, get, to get that generator. And 69 to 72 weeks? Yes, yeah, sir. Yes. That's today's um, video with the day of hospital. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, you know, if we were, if we had not found one, uh, we would really be uh, looking down the barrel of, uh, of trying to have a long-term rent on, on that that portable generator. And uh, you know, at, uh, at fifty thousand dollars a month, is that taking on to pay for a you know a replacement? Um, uh, so the, the other thing that's on that sheet that I just will mention, uh, if you look there, you'll see industrial uh, controls. Uh, they're, they're actually who's been maintaining our, our current generator for the past couple of decades. They are not really in the generator business, but they did find uh, one Kohler generator. Uh, they think. Uh, <laughs> somebody had bought for another use, and they think it meets our specifications, and I will not know about it until about lunchtime tomorrow. Things I don't know. And I asked the gentleman to talk to us, uh, Rouse, listen to the question, and we were on the phone with the engineers. And my one question was, you know, how long have they had it? They haven't used it. If it's been sitting there for two years, what has that done to the factory warranty? And, and uh, you know, if you do sell it to me, uh, who, who's going to do the maintenance? And, you know, what those? You cannot answer that, nor could he give me a firm price on, on what it was, was going to cost. Uh, so, you know, the only other option that we have where I know there's a generator potentially on the ground is the one through industrial controls, and I will not know anything about that until tomorrow about lunchtime. My concern... Uh, and this with, is usual? With, uh, well, there, there are some uh, that I found on the internet. Supposedly this one's no, new. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, this one is new. Okay. There are some used ones. The, one, the ones that are used that you find are, are basically 2008 to 2010. I mean, we'd be getting rid of a, a 20 year generator and, and replacing it with a, a 12 or 14 year old generator. You know, we don't know how it's been maintained, who's had it, and that kind of stuff. It really, really uh, concerns me. Uh, we, when, we, when the power goes off in the general, we need to, to get a backup just like they do. And I didn't even mention the fact that you know, we got a medical unit there at the jail that we have inmates there that, you know, uh, you know, that we get medical attention when the power goes off. This one in all been. You say it's one in Albany? The, the, the rental's in Albany. We can have it tomorrow. The rental. The, the rental. rental. But the purchase, the purchase and, I, and, I, and I apologize, but it, it's in Atlanta. It's the same company, Yancey Caterpillar, or Yancey Power is who it is. It's a Caterpillar, uh, and it, it's in Atlanta, and we can have it within a couple of days. I mean, it's got to go on a semi and have to be tracked down here, and then we'll have to get a crane there. We'll take it off. We'll that's the yeah, That's the permit. That's the rental the new one. The the new one. one. Right. But they're both from the, they're both from the same company. The, the, the Yancey actually has the, the only rental unit we can find and the only replacement that we know of for sure right now. Uh, and uh, and of the ones we of the three big manufacturers and suppliers, they have the only one that we don't have any lead time on and right now they're the low they're the lowest cost of, of those three. The only one I don't know about is the one that industrial control is calling me about. And, and I you know I could be good faith not tell you that, that there was an outlier there that we won't know about until tomorrow. Uh, do I have concerns about it? I, I do. 
Uh, the guy sounded very uh, unsure of, you know, it would not surprise if he called him back tomorrow and goes, you know, oops, my bad, they don't have it, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. And my concern is, you know, Caterpillar's only, uh, the engine's only gonna wait so long if somebody else called and, and ordered his generator, so people are waiting a year or better to get them, or they're gonna sell it. Uh, yep. Right now, we have a contract written and it's kind of in a hold pattern. Um, it, it, you know, if you come down to, you know, the staff recommendation uh, would be to A, allow us to go ahead and, and, and execute the rental agreement and get that, that moved forward. It's on wheels and as we move the old generator out, move the old generator in, we can move that around and that can continue to keep the gel with, with a power supply that's un, you know, uninterrupted. And, uh, and then on this other one, you know, uh, initially my recommendation was going to be that y'all approve uh, a purchase of the, uh, the the Caterpillar unit for $115,763 and the transfer switch from uh, Yancey uh, with an amount of $145,513. But if the board wishes to, uh, and y'all want us to wait and look at the one that Industrial Controls has got and see uh, if the warranty's there and if the purchase price is there. As long as y'all are willing to, uh, are okay with just you know, basically telling the chair to me and say if it's better, then, then execute that contract. If it's not, execute the Yancey contract. But the uh, longer you wait, the longer you wait, you know, because if we, you talking about four weeks run, that's, that's $54,017.48 for four weeks. No, no it's, it's $13,000 for four weeks. Oh, yes, sir, 13000 for four weeks. Four, four weeks. It's, it's oh, $3,000 yeah. a week if I remember oh, without looking oh, at it. That's still a lot of money. But, but, <laughs> yeah. but if, we, you know, if we had to rent that for, for 40 weeks till we got one of these generators in, oh, yeah. then, then, then that becomes a, a, a lot of money. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, the best fiscal answer is to, is to put, you know, buy the generator that we know that's on the ground right now and not, and not let it get gone. Uh, Just the new one. Yes, and as you can see, this is uh, important because not only did, did uh, uh, Colonel Merritt uh, show up, but the actual high sheriff is here uh, uh, as, as well. Uh, I, I think this is uh, unless I'm looking at this wrong on page two of the quotation. Look, are they knocking five thousand off if we if, rent? If we buy, if we do the rental and buy that, they will knock five thousand okay. dollars off the purchase price. So, I so basically, we're, we're getting a rental for eight thousand. I, I, I listed the max rental yeah. and the max purchase price there. I just wanted you to see the maximum. Cost and, and if you can see on there, I also put down there the labor and the crane rental. I don't know how much that's going to be. Well, they don't do the installation, the wiring. That's our responsibility. We have an electrician uh, who has looked at it. I, I should have a cost estimate. I do not predict that's going to go more than about ten thousand uh, dollars for those two items, based on what I've been told. Uh, and. Uh, you know, when I talked when I talked with you guys Friday, I was I, I really was talking about three hundred thousand dollars because there were a lot of, of unknowns. Mm -hmm. uh, that's come down now, and I think we're looking at sub two hundred uh, to to get this done. Uh, but but it is a, a, a critical a critical need. Uh, the state allows for emergency purchases, and you know there's now a procurement website that we have to actually uh, list these things on, but it, in a, in a emergency purchase the board of commissioners, just like a state agency, has the right to uh, to go ahead and make this purchase. We just have to provide all the information of that purchase to the Department of Administrative Services to be on file there to show that this board took emergency action. And yes, they had promised to hold this for any length of time for us or anything else. I, I, they, they have pretty much given me a head nod that uh, if we approve it tonight, it's going to be there in the morning. Uh, if we don't, then. Uh, uh, I, you know, I'd call them tomorrow and say we're, we, you know, we're still looking, and I, I don't think there's no promise. You know, the, the other upside, and, and you know, this is not something that normal folks are, and, and, and me included, would have ever thought about it. But uh, uh, Yancey, because they are the Southeast you know, Georgia's Caterpillar representative, the uh, the maintenance technicians that work on these actually work for Yancey. So you have technicians about Austin and Albany. They're trained by Caterpillar. Um, the uh, and I ask these questions because I, I want to know how does Kohler and you know how does Cummins do it over the other day too? And, and you know they're kind of like if you're a car dealer, you can go to a school and you know you can become certified, right? Uh, they have certified folks. I don't know where they are, or where they will be from, but it, you know if they went down, they would be dispatching somebody who was a, a trained rep, but they would not work for Caterpillar uh, at like. Yes, so, they, you know, the advantage is the, the 
availability of parts with with Yancey because they do have locations in Southeast Georgia. All right. So the first item we need to deal with is a motion to approve the portable generator and utilize at the Tip County Law Enforcement Center until the permanent replacement is installed. And to allow me to execute the attached rental agreement with the Yancey policy. So we have a motion. So move. We have a second. Second. Oh, look at that. Commissioner Hester, I heard first. Motion is there, second. All right, all in favor? All right. And the second item I need to deal with would be whether you want to go ahead and approve the purchase of the Caterpillar unit or if you prefer that Mr. Carter and I wait until we get the information or wait as long as noon tomorrow to get the information about the possible color unit through industrial controls. I, I'd like to make a motion we go ahead and secure the county bill. We'll have a second one. I'll second that. And can the motion state for an emergency purchase? For emergency purchase. Please. Yep. All right, so we have a motion and a second. I know what we've been dealing with at the hospital. You better grab them while they're there. <laughs> all right, all in favor of that. All right. Get one of a, a bicycle and hook a generator to it and share it for Prince George. Can we go back and rescind that vote? <laughs> I want to see that. <laughs> all right, Mr. Carr, you had any comments? That's the only thing I'd like to say. Is I, I just, Mr. Rowley, need to point out that I was wrong when I went up when he made his comments about my uh, about the, the, the zoning issue. I've already said that. Can you, can you sign up on a piece of paper? That was just redundant, but that's first time. I, I don't have anything this year. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I owe Jim an apology for saying he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you were wrong in saying he was wrong? I apparently I was. taxes. 
but it's hard for some of our elderly people to pay taxes and to maintain their homes. So I'd like to see if we can start looking for some housing grants to help with that as well. Dilapidated homes, I'm, yep, I'm back at that again. I know we say that we have some money um, in place for that. I would like to start seeing some dilapidated houses come down. I have a whole list in my <laughs> And, uh, I, and I'm ready. You, you, were, you were busy today, and, 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 as was I, uh, but I, I, you're on my list to talk to you about that very same thing tomorrow. If that's for you. That works for me. Um, I think that's all. Mr. Chair, if I could just, <coughs> I, I would like to say that, that if, you, uh, if you exit the front of the building, uh, you'll see a, a, a new fire engine uh, out there that is uh, one of three that you know, the county purchased and uh, we have one of those that's currently in service. Uh, the two will be going in service in the next couple of days. So if you'd like to see uh, one of the firing is that is there out front, uh, I think they're going to be a little bit of a big asset to the fire protection. Okay, thank you. I'm going to come back to Commissioner Hess for now. Madam, please just vote for <laughs> First of all, I'd just like to thank, I don't want to miss nobody's name, I just want to thank everyone for coming out today. And I hope you all continue to come back and support and listen to what we're saying and, and kind of help us out. Next, I would like to uh, say Jason uh, and the staff and everyone, it's been a long time. This project I've been working on for from here, maybe about 15 years, now it's coming to pass. And down on Yeoman and Dominic Street, all back down there, we are working on that. We have been lifting it up. We have been flooding out because 1990, 2001 or two, it flooded so high down there, we had to move people out. And uh, it's been a while. I've been patient. I know I've been patient and unpatient, but. We just go back and say, Joe, say I wait for my change to come. So it's it's almost there. Well, well, I just want to say thank you, and we're going to continue doing that, getting that fixed up. I don't know how long, I don't care how much long it takes, but I know we're doing, we're getting there now. And also, I'm a public safety man, and I think everybody on the board knows. Whatever the jail won't do about it, I'm for it. It's just point blank. Tell them I call them back. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's all I want to say. And, and just let me say this right here. I, no executive session. That's right. <laughs> so I'm going to make my little piece. I missed the other night meeting. And I was, I had a good time. And I did. You know, the donation was out there, it came back. <laughs> but I feel like I say, I, I don't miss too many meetings. You know, I don't, you know, I've been here 24, this is my 25th year. I think if we go back on the record, I, I'm not, might be off maybe a day or two. Out of 25 years, I might have missed seven days, seven weeks. So I think that's pretty good. So I'd just like to thank everyone that is here. I don't call no name. But if I call some name, I miss this name and those people. So everyone for coming. And please come back again. And I see some people just smiling and smiling, but I'm not gonna say nothing. <laughs> I just killed a little time because it's time to go eat some pork beans and wings. <laughs> that sounds really good. Commissioner right. Hughes brought up the about being willing to sign a letter supporting the coalition against bigger trucks. Is that something the board is interested in doing? Talking about it. Look at it. You already have something. Right. You, come on. I, I, you know Miss Mary will take care of us. <laughs> coming down and, and um, seeing the festivities. It's, it's uh, 
pretty nice little town, so second, second weekend is definitely number. And also, we get all received, should have received the invite from Union Church about uh, where they're inviting their elected officials to try to promote unity in the community and that type of thing. So I'm not sure you look at that and give an answer. Were you looking at us to sign this individually, Melissa? Or no, everyone can sign one sheet, sheet, and Miss Miriam will take care of the rest. Okay. I saw uh, Greg put his ex on his. We just used all to put his ex on his. Okay. Okay, anything else? Okay, we'll go to the next one. We have a motion. So move. <laughs> we have a second. Oh, Make sure bring the second. All in favor of adjourning. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you. Thank you.